Hey everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey. And over the past few weeks, I've had a few questions come in about uh, how to deal with a five on three situation or four on three situation. Um, so I figured I'd do a quick video about it and just share with you my philosophies on the five on three. Now, obviously, anytime you're getting into systems hockey, there's always you know a number of different ways of doing things, different philosophies. Um, you know, I always like to give that disclaimer that this may or may not coincide with your current team's strategies and philosophies and all that. But I figured I'd show you what I do and maybe some of it will come in handy for you uh, as you're planning your own team's um, you know, D-zone coverage on the 5-on-3 on the on or the 4-on-3. So let's go ahead. We'll pull up the rink. I'll show you what we've got going on. Um, as you can see, we've got, uh, we've got the other team set up in standard umbrella. So we've got three guys across the top. Uh, then we've got two guys who you know, generally are trying to you know, jump in on rebounds or whatever, or screens or tips, all that stuff. So what we do um, is I like to set up, I call it a rotating triangle. So you can see here I've got a forward and 2D. It doesn't always have to be that way. It's, they're really, when it boils down to it, it's, it's not set positions in a five on three situation. It's just a rotation. And basically it's more important that you have the right guys out there than you know, designating certain positions to be out there. So you could have two forwards and one D, or sometimes you know, it just depends. You may even have a situation where you know, if you've got a couple D in the box, maybe you even have three forwards out there. It just depends. What you're looking for for the, the, you know, the best chances of killing the five on three is to have players that are very fast and very agile. So these have got to be players that can get out quickly, get back in quickly, um, side to side, and also are very aware of what the play is doing. So you got to have guys that are, are good at keeping their head on a swivel and making sure that guys aren't sneaking in behind them. Obviously, you're at a huge disadvantage on a five on three, so you've got to be very aware of what's going on. So here's how the setup goes. Basically, you've got, you start in the triangle, and um, I like to use a, a tactic that I call aggressive contain, which means basically you're going to go full speed out, but you're going to stop about halfway to three quarters of the way to the puck carrier. So it makes it look like you're going out very aggressively, but at the same time you're protecting yourself against over committing. That's the biggest mistake you can do on a five on three is get one guy sucked out of position. Now all of a sudden it's a four on two and you really don't have a very good chance of stopping this. So what you want to do, let's just say this guy's got the puck. You're going to send out, let's just say we're sending out this forward. You always send the closest guy to it. Okay, so that's why I'm saying there's not really set positions. So you're going to send the closest guy. He's going to go out full speed but stop somewhere between halfway and three quarters of the way to the puck. Okay, usually what that's going to do is make this guy make decisions. So he may try to shoot. If he does shoot, hopefully it hits this guy's shin pads, bounces out. Um, if it does get through, we've hopefully got our two defensemen who are doing a good job boxing out keeping these guys from getting their sticks on the rebounds. Um, most likely what's gonna happen is this guy will pass. So let's say he passes to the middle guy. As Soon as he passes, this forward that went out immediately retreats back. And what you're gonna do is send the weak side defenseman or whichever defenseman's closest sends out, again, aggressive contain. So you're gonna go out keeping your body in the passing lane and your stick or sorry, your body in the shooting lane and your stick in one of the passing lanes. Um, doing it this way, hopefully, you know, you may get a stick on it. You may be able to chip it out. Um, that's what we're hoping for with this. Now, as this guy comes out, it's a rotation. So um, either the forward or the defenseman, whichever's closest, and, and these, are, these guys are going to have to communicate. It makes a lot of sense. you got to communicate. Um, one of them will slide over, pick up this guy. Now you've got these two guys boxing out in front. Okay, let's just say it goes back to the original guy. Okay, you probably guessed, forward slides back out, defenseman slides back in, and you've got that rotation. So I call that's why I call it a rotating triangle. There really are no set positions. It's whoever comes out, whoever's closest comes out and challenges using that aggressive contained tactic. Uh, if it goes straight across, then same idea. Comes out, this guy could slide over, forward drops back in. This has to be instantaneous. So there's a lot of you know read and react and anticipation that has to go on with a properly killed five on three. Um, that's how it goes. If it's a four on three, it's pretty much the same philosophy. You're just doing the rotating triangle. Um, obviously, the other team probably won't set up in, a, in an umbrella. At least it won't be the same type of umbrella. They may have three across the top, but obviously with only four, they'll only have one in front. So your odds get a little bit better. It's a little bit easier to cover with the four on three, but the tactics still remain the same. Um, the objective on the five on three is not to get much offense generated. Um, you're mostly just trying to ice it. Uh, after you've iced it, then usually what I do is I, I do a very, very passive forecheck. So you'll send the forward out, you know, maybe just past the top of the, of, of, or, you know, just past the red line there. And then you'll send the 2D out and uh, basically attempt to just keep everything funneled back to the side. And then as the play comes back, you're retreating back into that, back into that triangle. 
okay? Compact triangle, and then from there you branch out into your position depending on where the other team sets up. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Hopefully that can come in useful for you, and um, that's, how, that's how I like to kill a five on three.